Um, so, Lee. Hello, you're right. Hi. Uh, Hi. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, I didn't know whether. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'd be really useful to share some of the um, evaluate. Well, some of some of the evaluation results that that you've got. So, yeah, over to you. Yeah. Thanks very much, Deepak. So, um, as Lisa mentioned, this is uh, still a, at the pilot stage that we're running in this project, and I think it's important to note that that Lisa Motley, the project manager, is entirely uh, patient focused in her approach. There's been patient involvement in the task and finish groups for this project throughout, and that's why we actually find ourselves in the situation where I'm running the evaluation. Uh, Lisa received a proposed toolkit for the evaluation for this, and actually presented it to patients because of that patient-centred focus and the patients basically ripped it up and threw it away. Um, they weren't interested, it didn't evaluate the areas of concern that they had and they felt that it was cumbersome and lengthy. So we went right back to the drawing board and we decided before we even begin to devise this evaluation toolkit, let's start with the patients. So we went to the patient advisory board, we went to the cancer champions that Emma mentioned in her presentation earlier, and it seems straightforward really, doesn't it? But how often does it actually happen? We said to the patients, what do you feel that you need from a cancer care review? And then we designed the evaluation around those needs and we ended up with a radically different evaluation. It, it shifted in focus from a quantitative research project to a qualitative research project, entirely focused on what patients told us they needed to receive from a CCR. And the staff evaluation mirrors that exactly. Now, it's important to be clear, I've been involved in task and finish groups, I'm involved in NHS work, but I'm conducting this research independently. It falls under the UCL umbrella. It's going to be part of my master's degree dissertation. And I have no preconceptions as to the findings that we're going to uh, you know, achieve from this evaluation. So I'm just going to talk you a little bit through the evaluation now. Next slide, please, Tom. So obviously, as you're aware, this is a this is a new research project for us, not the first time this format's been used, but new for us. So we are running this evaluation of the pilot rollout and it really will contribute to our understanding of this new patient care innovation. And it is going to provide evidential support behind the further implementation of virtual care groups. If the research is not carried out, there is a risk that we will carry on implementing a procedure that is either not beneficial or even potentially harmful to patients. So it's important that we understand, get a full patient evaluation of this project. And the aim of this research is to evaluate the patient and the staff experiences of this new virtual group consultation format. We want to purposefully explore the appropriateness of this format and the content of the virtual group CCRs for patients to gain an insight into whether patients are actually satisfied that they were supported adequately in the sessions and to examine whether patients feel that their uh, concerns were fully addressed. And similarly, the staff research evaluation aims to explore whether staff feel that the CCR format lends itself to meeting patient needs. So the focus is not on interpreting what staff make of the experience for themselves, but to gain an insight into how effectively they believe the format supports the patient's needs and enables them to support the patient. The research will also aim to explore any successes and failures of the format. So this evidence is going to provide context for future adaptations of the format and for further proposed implementations. So we can start to extend it to include those who have different cancer types, to consider the needs of those receiving palliative care, for those who are receiving um, end of life care. And one of the areas that we're interested in that Emma alluded 
alluded to earlier in her presentation was teenagers and the lack of support there. So we'd like to also investigate how effective this can be for other um, age groups, namely teenagers who have a very strong online presence in the course of their normal everyday life. Next slide, please. So the research questions that we have devised are around three key areas. The first question is the people who are directly involved in these cancer care reviews. So we are thinking about how this uh, new format has met their needs. What is their perception of the new format review? The second is around the wider issue of are we achieving through this new format exactly what cancer care reviews are there to provide, which is providing people with support to live well with and beyond cancer? And then we have a wider research question still, which is how this can then be beneficial for wider populations receiving cancer care this way through this virtual format of cancer care review. So how it's pertinent right now, but how we can extrapolate this out. Next slide, please, Tom. So. The approaches that we are going to take are we are recognising now that there is a qualitative focus to this research. We want to explore the subjective experiences of participants to recognise that there may be a wide variety of perceptions towards this newly formatted uh, review. We need to understand in depth the human experience for each participant. So it's based on the interactions that will have taken place within their own CCR session. And due to the very fluid and collaborative nature of the sessions, no two sessions will be the same. They will be shaped by the participants, the facilitators, and the individual and shared experiences. So the aim is to really reflect upon these experiences and critically appraise them. So it's our knowledge of the participants' experiences, it's the insights and views that we gain that will develop as we conduct the evaluation research. And this knowledge will then be used to shape future adaptations of the, of the format. Um, we really want to focus on understanding multiple truths in depth, to understand the meaning of events for participants, to discover what the essence of the experience was for them, what worked, what didn't, and how we can adapt this for wider groups. And as Lisa's mentioned, this is therefore, you know, a strong attempt at co-production. Patients have been involved in much earlier stages around the design of this evaluation, and it is an entirely patient focused evaluation. We have engaged patients, we will be using straightforward language, we will be providing feedback to patients and participants around the evaluation findings that we get. Next slide please Tom. So it's very purposive research that we are doing uh, at the moment of patients with a cancer diagnosis of a specific type living in a specific geographic region underneath your PCM. And we will be reaching out both to staff and to patients and staff will be reaching out to clinical and administrative staff because we believe that actually both are a key element of the provision to ensure that it is seamless for patients. The sample sizes will be small because we will be running in-depth interviews, but this will be taking place over a rolling period of around a year. So we will have a sizable number of participants in total, but we want to allow time uh, for longer interviews to take place. And the interviews are going to be grouped by cancer types to make sure that we get representation from uh, patients that have attended different cancer type CCRs. But they're also going to be grouped geographically to see what the experience is like under different PCNs. And as I said, this is a qualitative shift. These will be one to one interviews with the researcher, and that is to allow optimum sensitivity 
to give patients and staff agency and freedom to talk anonymously about how they feel. And this is potentially the first time some patients will have been really que uh, asked questions around their feelings and their emotions and their views, potentially throughout their treatment. We're going to be conducting telephone or online interviews. We're going to empower the patients to make that choice themselves so they can put themselves in a, a safe and secure environment where they feel most comfortable. And we are going to be running semi-structured interviews. So there is some knowledge we absolutely want to glean, but we have to allow those individuals time and the opportunity to express everything that they feel that they need to be able to say. Interviews all also allow us to um, overcome the logistical issues of trying to get a number of staff together at the same time so we can approach you individually. Next slide please. And really the interviews are to overcome um, issues um, and ethical considerations. Obviously some of these participants they are people who have had cancer, may potentially still have cancer, may still potentially be you know, well into a, a care plan for their cancer. And so these discussions are, can be a source of potential anxiety or discomfort or embarrassment. So we are aiming for maximum sensitivity in the way that we conduct these interviews and fully supported, signposted, so uh, participants know where they can head back if they become distressed from the interview, where we can signpost them to additional support. Um, staff as well may feel a, 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 you know, anxiety at sharing, particularly if they're giving critical commentary. And that's why we're extending anonymity to all participants, because we not, are not looking to tick a box here. We are looking to truly understand how effective this new CCR format is. Um, you know my own positionality. I have experience of receiving cancer diagnosis and a treatment, but no experience of actually a CCR for myself. I will be making that clear to participants as well, because it is generally believed within research that an insider status allows a quicker collection, connection with participants and people feel more comfortable to open up quite quickly then about their own experiences. So overall, um, this is, as I say, going to form my master's degree work, but we are really aiming to understand how effective that this CCR format is, and we are entirely independent and neutral in terms of how we interpret that data. Thank you very much.